Thanks so much for watching and for tuning in on our broadcast. We pray that God will bless you and truly really transform your life by the teaching and preaching of God's word. Pray you enjoy yourself through the worship, through the word of God, and New Seasons Church is a church that wants to help you transform your life to God's glory. We pray that you have a great time. If you have any issues, please email us, or email us on the website. We might be able to best support you and serve you. Once again, thank you so much for watching our service, and may God bless you. Praise the Lord. This is the one time a year I preach in this hot road. Because it's very important for us to realize that um, if it had not been for God, education, our life would not be um, where it is today. And all of us who have took the journey want you to realize that God has blessed you for the journey. To, our, to those who are left, to graduates, um, I want you to know that God is not through. There's a lot more, when you stop being a life learner, you stop living. So don't make this, take this as your, your, your zenith or your apex moment. You have not arrived. Yet still continue to grow in God, grow in knowledge, that you fulfill all that God has for you. Um, I want to preach, Karen had said something about an ego. So I want to preach a little about ego Let's pray. Spirit living God, let your rain drop from heaven fall fresh upon your people. Spirit living God, let your rain drop from heaven fall fresh upon your word. Spirit living God, let your rain drop from heaven revive your servant this morning. Lord, let me decrease that your spirit might increase. I pray, God, for transparency it might seem to me to your son, but Father, in case they stop at your service, please send your servant to a detour sign that I may show them the way to the cross. Nothing of me, but all of you. Please, God, nothing of me. I pray, God, for things this morning. I pray for challenge. I pray for conviction. Oh, God, I pray for spirit of change. When people are challenged and convicted by your word, they'll be changed by the same power of that word. Let your spirit have the right of way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did all of you leave? You? Young kids? Okay. Yeah. I want to talk to this. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, a very familiar part of scripture in the Bible. Those who have who read, who read, read the word of God, it's one of Solomon's greatest parts of scripture in my mind. One reason why we kind of pinned the name of our church. Everything has its own time. He says in verse 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, the word of the preacher Son of David, king of Jerusalem. Verse 2 says, Vanity of vanity, says, says the Lord. No, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. That's 1 and 3. It's okay. 3 and 1. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. For everything there is a season and a time for purpose under heaven. Everything there is a season. Right now, some of you may be in the most dramatic season of your life. The reason why we call our church New Season is because you will go through different seasons. Today we're celebrating our graduates who have transferred from one season to now another season. Because everything in life has a season. You go through the dating season. But, but, but sorry, you go through the birthing season. You, you be, you're born. You go through the nurturing season, the adolescent season, and the teenage season, and the young adult season, and the, the marriage season, the kid season, and the grandparent season, and the, 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 the old year. And, and everything in that life, according to God's word, had a purpose in it. And if you follow God's plan, you'll find yourself going through season after season after season because everything in your life has been purposed by God to take you to where God has taken you. And when you realize that life has more meaning, life becomes more than a moment, becomes a journey. And when you embrace each season as a gift from God, you celebrate each season as a gift from God. I celebrate the seasons that I am now. 
I'm at the season of my life where I'm, I, I got grandkids and I got, my kids are grown and, 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 and I'm celebrating that because I thank God that I had that season. I remember the season when I was, had young kids and, and Pop Warner and, and, and track meets and I remember that season. I, I remember my college season. I remember each season of my life and every season that I went through and I journeyed through has allowed me to understand God's purpose for my life. And when you embrace each season, it defines your moments. I've been through the text says the time to be born. I've been through the season when I watched my kids born, come out the womb, and saw them being born and birthed, and, and I've been through the time where I had to lay down my mother to rest. Both those moments are defining times in a person's life. When you have, when you go through the cycle of life or the process of life, and you live long enough, you'll have to go embrace those seasons of your life. And the same way we have confused it, where we have cried at funerals and celebrate at births, we need to, do, we need to flip, flip it around. There was security in the womb. There's fear coming out the womb. And those who die in God, they're dying to grace and joy and peace. And those who are born without God are coming into a world that may not love them. There's a time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck what is planted. There are things in your life that you have been, I want to come and grab this, right here, y'all, right here. There are things in your life as you go through college and high school and graduates that your parents have put into you. Life has put those who are young college kids now who are in school, who went their first year of college, you can remember the things your parents told you. You can remember that your parents told you that at, that at some point this is going to happen and, you know, and this is going to happen. And you remember it and all of a sudden when you find yourself in that moment, you hear somebody's voice. Anybody had the voices of their parents talk to them in college? And you can make that move and, and, and you hear and I, and I thank God for the time that we have the time to plant seeds in the lives of our children. Time to pluck, I mean the time to receive what was planted. In other words, young ladies, when, when, you, when you go to college and, and, and you go into a Christian university, everybody ain't Christian. Just let you know. When you go in, you go in, you stand around, you stand around the household. Stuff still ain't perfect. Those of you who are in college now, when you said the, the, the pluck was been planted, in other words, when you when you get when you want to venture into something you shouldn't do, you need to pluck what was planted. Didn't, didn't pass say I shouldn't do this? Put, get that fruit and eat it and don't go that way. Because if you, feel, if you don't pluck what's been planted, you'll do, what, you'll do the thing that you don't supposed to do. And therefore you'll waste the seed. The next verse, says, verse, verse 3, verse 3 says that, that there's also a time to kill. Hmm. What do you mean time to kill? It's a time, there's some things that, that, that in your life that are foolish that you need to, to get up to destroy with. Your foolishness and your childishness, those things got to die at the next level. You, you, you couldn't hang out all week long and stay, for the, and stay for the bar. Some friends, some things, you had, you had to destroy and get away. You couldn't study and do things you wanted to Ted, and, 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 and pass school. Things you can't do, you had to, some things you got to kill and say, I can't do it because why? There's a goal in my life. The time for this is the time for that, but this time now, I gotta let it go. You know, the time for healing, the time when those things that you have set aside, you may be able to go and, and have fun again and enjoy and have healing. But you gotta realize, beloved, even though even then, it's the time to break down. There's some things in your life, in the journey of life, that you have to break things down. And guess what? It's 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 everyone in this room has been through a breakdown season. Can, can, we get, can, can, can we get real this morning, everybody? And, we've been, and, and a breakdown season comes in different times of your life. And God will use different people and different things to break you down. Some of us went through the marriage breakdown, through the business breakdown, the unemployment breakdown, the home breakdown. We've been through some breakdowns in our life, and sometimes we want to quit in that season. But God said if you keep holding on, there's also a time to build back up. And those of us who have quit in the breakdown escapes from the buildup. And you put yourself in a point where you miss the buildup because guess what? God is going to build you up if you fail the breakdown test. Because you've got to go through the breakdown test to get built up. 
And some of us don't want to go through that test because why? That test hurts because it breaks you down. Anybody been broken down this morning? And it's pain. The breakdown is painful. The breakdown, and that's why the next word says, the next verse 4 says, the time, the breakdown makes you weep. But also, the buildup makes you cry. Because you remember where God broke you down from and how God is bringing you back up to, and you appreciate the good God you serve. Time to weep, and also time to laugh. Time to crack up and say, huh, I thought I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> but my God, my God, shall supply all of my needs. There are times that they say that this one will not survive, but yet I'm still standing. When I did all I can, I'm still standing, not by my means, not by my hand, but by the hand of a God that can take care of me. The time to mourn, time to feel sad for those you're trying to reach and those who fall astray and those who, who will never, ever listen. Young people, don't do that. There'll be times now, Katrina, you have no one at all, no one at all. There's no more curfews. Mm. You still got curfews, Kelly. You still home. You better come on one time for mom to put the elbow to you. For you, dear one, I know when I dedicated you a long time ago, you're going to have no one at that school to tell you, come in now. All you have, my dear, is the, is the 12 years, the, the nine years that you get to pour into your life and plant the seeds of the Word of God, the love of God, the hope of God. So when it comes time to make that decision to be true to your, who you are, you can cry about the moment, but you can dance about the decision. Because the moment will be mournful because you want to go and do, be with your friends and, and hang out and, and, and you can't do it. But then you realize, God, thank you because I can dance with you. I may not, I, inside I want to go with my friends, I want to have fun, but being here with you is more important. Being on point, being on task, being, being the kind of person you've made me is more important than, than going with my friends. So I may, dis I may disappoint them, but I'm not disappointing you. That's why me and you here, God, in this room, just dancing. And I'm celebrating the things that, that, were, that were put into me year after year after year because, God, you've been good to me. I'm not going to take the seeds that have been planted by my pastor, my mom, my friends, my, my deacons, my beloved. I'm not going to take those seeds and throw them away. Oh, no. When I've got to pluck the fruit, <laughs> I'm either the good fruit or the planted seed of my life. Then it says, also, the time to cast away stones. The time to gather stones. There are times in your life where the things of your past you've got to throw away. Some of us carry stones too much. Some of us keep carrying stones in our pockets so much we can't move forward and it's pulling us down. Stones are weights. But also there's time to pick up a stone. Remember, some, that's what it says, gather a stone and time to embrace. There's sometimes you have to embrace the stones that, that God has given you. Some stones are, remember, are memorials. I, 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 have, I, have a, I have a rock in my, in my, in my office. I, I climbed this huge mountain in Phoenix, and you know, when I was a little younger then, a little, little lighter then, I climbed this huge mountain in Phoenix. I probably couldn't do it now, so I bought me a stone back. <laughs> so this huge stone I got, and wrote down, I wrote, down, I wrote, I wrote in the stone of February 17th, remind me of, vic of the victory I had in climbing this mountain. I kept reminding myself that I can get to the mountain if I work hard. And that stone's in my office. Remind me that the mountain is capable to climb if I work hard. There's gonna be stones you get to gather in your life. You got one more stone to carry. Remind you, not only are you going to have a jurist out, but you're going to be a lawyer. You're going to pass the bar, your first shot. You're going to pass the bar and become a lawyer because that's, your, that's another stone you want to carry. You're going to pass the bar and be a lawyer and be a lawyer with integrity. Not shyston. You can be one that I can hire in Jesus' name. Because I'm going to need some. Because I know I'm going to preach when they tell me I can't preach about certain things. You got to get me out of jail. Amen. In Jesus' name. Between you and Monica, I'm going to be safe in Jesus' name. <laughs> That's why God sent me lawyers to the house because they knew I'm going to be in trouble. But you're not finished yet gathering these stones. So it's time to embrace. And it's time to refrain from embracing. There are times in our life where we have to embrace the, the truth of who we are. And there's times that we have to refrain from that truth. I cannot deny the fact that I was raised 
by a single mom who loved me, who passed away. I cannot, I got to embrace the fact that she did the best she could and she, she made me who I am and she made me strong. I also got to embrace the fact there's some things I got to learn, I had to learn the hard way. Sometimes you got to take the good with the bad and embrace them both and, and understand that both of those things help define who you are today. Also, there's a time to gain and a time to lose. You, you, you would think it would says lose, then gain, but you see, sometimes when you gain, you're going to lose. Every higher step costs you something. Come on, somebody here. Everything worth achieving will cost you something. Friends, loved ones, moments, everything worth keeping will cost you something. But there'll be a time to keep. There are things in your life, beloved, that you're going through today, and you're going through in your college years. And Ted, you got you still got more don't you still got more things to go, Ted. You gotta go and you gotta go another higher, no, no, another level. Because why? God's not through with you. Yet. There's still some things you gotta keep, and there's still some things and issues you gotta throw away. And beloved, check this out. Just because you're in one season, don't think that season is your only season. Just because the season you're in now is hard and it's difficult, don't get stuck in the middle of one season. I know kids who are kids who, are, who should be in the next season, and they like being in one season, and they're in, a, they're in a, a, what I call the hamster season. They're going around and around and around because they will not embrace and move on to the next season. Because why? The next season might scare them and make me in fear. So instead of going in, in, in the unknown, they better stay in the comfort zone and go around and around and around and around. And that's what I call a wasted season. And too many of us are spending our life and our days and our times and our hours in a wasted season going around and, and wondering why we're not moving higher and farther. Because you have you got to embrace the unknown. You can never go into another season in your comfort zone. You have to embrace new seasons, each season of the unknown with power, faith, and perseverance. Never forget when we started this church, it was unknown to me. Everybody told me we were going to fail. We couldn't do it. But, we have a, but together, we embraced the new season. And look here, eight years later, we're still yet standing. Wasn't scared, wasn't afraid, maybe nervous. We had a God on our side. He supplied our needs. There's something we kept and something we have learned how to throw away. It says the Austin word, it's time to, there's, there's a time to, 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 to keep the tear and time to sow. I didn't get that until I looked and I realized that there are some things in life we do got to, we do got to rip. You're about to rip the cord from your mom. It's hard. Rip the cord of being that dependent thing from your parents. And that's a hard cord to rip. But you still got to keep it kind of there because you're going to still need her. So, so one cord is ripped, but there's, some, there's another cord that's being sold because even the, the, the dependency of her may be gone, but the voice is still sold in you that you can hear her when things go different and go astray. My mother's dead, and God has severed life, but I thank God that she's sold in my mind. And she, her story and her life is sold in my mind, and it's etched in my heart that I realize that if it had not been for her, I wouldn't be here today. And every time I go through stuff, I still hear my mama's voice. Anybody know about, about hearing, 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 hearing the voice and, and you get scared? No, anybody being scared? It's about, it's about someone telling you, do you know, you know, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you better than this. Come on, somebody here. And hearing that voice allows you to keep silent. <laughs> and then sometimes allows you to what? To speak. There are going to be times, those you here this morning, as you venture in your life, and today we got a great time, we got a, a baby dedication, of a baby that, that the average person would be upset with God. God, why me, and why me, and this isn't fair, and this isn't right. But there's a God that says, I understand everything under, under heaven and earth. Baby went through stuff. I remember when I first seeing the little baby and, and was struggling and, and the tubes and, and matter of fact, they told me the baby wasn't gonna cry. 
As long as we went, and I remember that first, he cried, he cried loud. Me and Linnell was in, in the, we, 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 me and my brother was, was in the waiting room, and, they, and that baby, they cro- the rolled the baby by, and them lungs were going, ah! And Linnell said, I guess they wrong about, the, about, the, about his lungs. Because <laughs> he, he cried out loud. They said he wasn't going to do this here, and then he did it. They said he wasn't going to do this here, and he did it. They said he wasn't going to do this here. And every time he, he moved, it was the seeds of God planted by faith in our lives, and yet he's still here now. Why? Because God is a good God. They wrote him off at birth. But God said, there's a time to speak. But y'all kept telling them doctors, not my child. I don't care what you do, but I know a God that'll keep my child in spite of you. And with her faith kept showing there's a God that's more powerful than a doctor. There's a God more powerful than medicine. And today, we will dedicate that baby to God because he is God's testimony of what God can do. Time to speak. Not to be afraid of, of the unknown. You trust God and say, God, whatever you do, this child will glorify you. I'm going to tell people, regardless of what happens, I still believe that you are God. Take him or keep him, God. You're God, and I trust you. And I'm going to tell everybody, oh, no, you don't hold this thing. God does. And when you know that, you can embrace that season. And it says also the time to love. Time to love life. Time to see the joy life is also time to hate life, the pain, the sorrows of life. Hate, hatred is a rough word. Beloved, there's some things I just hate. I hate to see women being abused. I hate to see kids misused. I hate to see marriage divorces the same as high as in the world as in the church. I hate to see the decay of our families, the decay of society. I hate these things. There's nothing I can do about it, but guess what? If I show some love, I might be able to turn hate back into love. And the world is a church that loves people just the way they are. Because the world's at war. That's why God stopped this whole phrase with the last word. And a time for what? Peace. It starts off with being born. And ends with peace. Everyone in this life, this room, was born. And God's ultimate goal in your life is to give you peace. He didn't say riches. He didn't say homes. He didn't say cars. It says a time of peace. You were here this morning. You're wondering, what's this life all about? Beloved, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 31, as the eagle stirs up, its nest in verse 11, that the God, as the eagle stirs up its nest, an eagle, in Deuteronomy 32, 32 and 11, the eagle, when the eagle goes and builds a nest, he, he, builds, a, he builds a nest for his young, and, and at the bottom of the nest, he puts thorns in the nest. And, and, and eagle, eagles are, are is an amazing bird. And, and, and he put these thorns on the bottom of the nest, and then he goes and flies around and puts other nice stuff in the nest, and you can't feel the storms, the, the, the thorns and the stickers at first. Because what happens is he makes the nest real comfortable for the little eagles so, so they can stay there. But after a while, after, and, 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 then, and then something real cool, when an eagle, when, when a female eagle wants to mate with a male eagle, there's a test they got to go through. Here's a test. She, 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 they, she finds an eagle that, 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 that she might want to mate with, or, or she chooses an eagle, and she takes this eagle, or she flies him straight towards the sun, because the eagle's the only bird that can, that can look into the sun eye and keep moving. It, it flies above the storm, and she, she gets this bird, and she flies him way up high. It, it, then they do what I call it, it, it's a, a death dive. They, 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 they get way up high, and then they, 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 wrap, they wrap wings, and they drop straight down. And if you're a, a good, strong male eagle, it ain't scared of the drop. You better just see it. Whoa. But if you were scared, you start flying because the drop's too low. If the drop's too hard. Women, don't take a man that can't handle a drop. I'll let you know. If you can't handle a drop, you can't handle the highs. And if you're an eagle that can handle the drop, then she allows you to mate with her, and you have eagle birds, and then she take care of the eagles, and she put the eagles in, in, in the nest, and, and pretty soon you got four and five eagles in this nest. And she goes and she feeds the eagles with these, these worms, and she feeds them, and, and all of a sudden they start growing. And how many of you know that you can't keep too many things in one room? 
And all of a sudden, she, 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 she goes and she, some eagles can fly. She, and she, she gets the birds when they get kind of bigger. And she gets them out there and she takes them higher and she drops them. So there's some eagles that says, I ain't going nowhere. It's comfortable here. And, and, and she takes them up and she drops them up and they, and they fly. And she has to go back there and pick them up before they die and put them back in the nest. Because they like the nest. Then what she does, she starts pulling stuff out the nest. And, it, and his little feet start hurting because he's now, he, he, what used to be comfortable? The thorns hurt. And, and, and it used to be was loving the, the cooking. Mama don't feed him no more. Because she stopped bringing him food because he's starting to fly on his own now. I tell my kids, don't, don't call me no more for money because you got to fly on your own now. I'm, making, I'm putting what? Stickers on the bottom of the, of, the, of the nest. And so at some point, the nest gets so uncomfortable. The bird on his own gets up and flies away. But the whole time, each eagle flies. If they would just put their heads up, they see mama hovering over them, watching every flight, every up, every down. So beloved, if you think you're dropping, if you think you're by yourself, every now and then, just look up. And see God's hovering over you, telling you, I'm watching you. It's going to be okay. I got you more than you got yourself. Because I'm God. He'll hover you. And though the journey might be nervous, might be scary, God, who says, I see every tear, every moment, every season under heaven, I'm here with you. So this morning, there are those who are going through seasons this morning. And I don't want you to quit in the middle of your season. I don't want you to quit in the middle of your struggle, of your marriage struggle season or your life struggle season. No. I want you to have the joy of going to the grandparent season and the next season and the, and the getting old season when it's fun. The empty nest season, praise the Lord Jesus. We can be goofy together at the house, just Jesus' name. It's gonna be it's gonna be okay after a while, trust me. But you gotta do these seasons of life. Don't quit too early. Cause the best is yet to come. You might be here this morning. You wanna quit. That's okay. You got a dream. Ted was telling me for years I'm gonna finish. I kept praying for him. I walked this morning. But he's not done. Years I, I, I prayed for her. She said, Pastor, I'm watching your project today. You're gonna be a good. I said, I said, welcome to the club, girl. Only 1% of American people got, got doctorates. Welcome to the club. She kept going. Her season. And somebody here this morning, in a season. And it's hard, it's difficult, but I want you to know right now. If you quit this season, here's the bad news. You got to repeat again. Because God's going to teach you in every season. So go ahead, embrace this season. Don't run from it that you will go to your next season. And those of you who are on the hamster wheel, all you have to do to get off is to stop and get off. God wants to bless you in your season. You're here this morning. And you've been struggling with your life and your the questions of life. God, why am I here? God told you the verse first. There's a purpose for you, but it's in God. You can't figure it out. You can't analyze it. You got to embrace the truth that God is here for you. You're here this morning. You have never confessed Christ as your Savior. That's the ultimate question. Because these degrees, these roles mean nothing. We come to God, we come to God bare as we are. And the only thing he cares about, do you know my son Jesus Christ? So if you're here this morning, you never accept Christ as your Savior. This morning, right now, we can really help you graduate. It's the Heavens University. If you're here this morning, 
you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, while the believers are praying and, and asking God to move you here this morning, you've never accepted Christ, would you please Pastor, I need Jesus Christ tomorrow. I never, I, never, I never said that prayer. I never said the, the prayer of confession. I never, I, never, I never said that. I don't know what that means. Well, let me have the joy of introducing you to Christ this morning. You're here this morning. You've never confessed your sins to Christ. Would you please, at your seat, raise your hand and say, Pastor, I need Jesus Christ this morning. And the amazing journey of faith will start right now. You're here this morning. You have once been in church, and the church people beat you up. I understand that. But God didn't beat you up. God still loves you. He's crazy about you and wants you to come home. If you hear this this morning and you want to come back home to God, all you have to do is get your seat. Just raise your hand, Pastor. I want you to come back home. I've been, I've been running too long and I'm tired. I want to get off this hamster wheel and come home. If you hear this morning, just raise your hand and come home. And thirdly, you might be believing. You know God, you know His Son, you don't have a church home. The Bible says, I promise rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. The Bible says to give prophets, apostles, pastors, teachers, equipers for the work of the saints, for the work of the ministry. I must call a pastor. I believe about you the way God believes about you. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said you are the apple of his eye. And God said you are blessed to be a blessing. I believe that about you. It's my calling to pull the blessing of God out of you by the preaching and the teaching of his word. And I love my calling. And I would love this morning to be your pastor this morning. Here this morning. And God has called you to our family. I see your hand. God bless you. I see your hand. God bless you. I call to our fam, please. Just lift. I see your hand, God. But just, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Don't worry about nobody else. Don't worry about what people say. It's between you and God this morning. Embrace your season. You might go to your next one. God, there are those who raised their hands. We bless your name for allowing them to realize that this season is over and this new journey. We'll begin the day. Will you bless them, God? Will you keep them, God? And God, those who are graduating from this new season of your life, God, to the next season, God, let your grace hover upon them, God. Remind them today, God, it's your grace and mercy that has brought them through every step of the way. Bless them, oh God, the only way you can. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Give God some praise. Give God some glory. Come on, somebody.